Welcome to this episode of Above the Cloud. Today we will hear from the Bhagavatam how to develop detachment by attachment. Our text describes the state of consciousness of an advanced uh, soul. Upon being fixed in his attachment to the Supreme Personality of Godhead by the grace of the Spurta Master and by awakening knowledge and detachment, the living entity situated within the heart of the body and covered by the five elements burns up his material surroundings exactly as fire arising from wood burns the wood itself. Let us pause uh, for a moment. Here an image is given. Fire, which comes from the wood, burns wood. In the same way, uh, when a living entity develops attachment to Krishna, he will burn up his material coverings. Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport, when a living entity increases his attachment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is to be considered like fire. A blazing fire is visible by its exhibition of heat and light. Similarly, when the living entity within the heart becomes enlightened with full spiritual knowledge and detached from the material world. He burns up his material covering of the five elements and becomes free from the five kinds of material attachments, namely ignorance, false egoism, attachment to the material world, envy and absorption in material consciousness. The obvious question is, how will we develop such knowledge and detachment um, and such a form of attachment to Krishna? Srila Prabhupada explains this in the fourth canto, chapter 22, text 25. He says, we can increase our propensity for devotional service by hearing Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam from realized souls. The more we hear from realized souls, the more we make advancement in our devotional life. The more we advance in devotional life, the more we become detached from the material world. The more we become detached from the material world, as advised by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the more we increase an in attachment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here a process is given. Hearing from realized souls make, makes us more interested in devotional life so that we can make advancement. And as we advance, we become detached from the material world and attached to Krishna. You need uh, an increased attachment to Krishna to say no to material attachments. Mm, Prabhupada advises elsewhere, Therefore, increased attachment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead is advised in all Shastras. That is the only way of detachment from material existence. Many people have tried to develop detachment from unhealthy habits. I remember when I was a child, I read cartoons of a Viking warrior called Hega the Terrible. He was very fat and he knew he should eat less. 
it was becoming a scandal. His body became so big that his garment uh, could no longer be held uh, by uh, the belt around his big uh, belly. And then although he put, had put many new holes for the buckle in his uh, belt, it, it was simply no longer possible. So one day this Hagar the Terrible with his big uh, battle axe passes by a table on which there is a cream cheese. He stops and he asks himself, who is stronger, Hagar or the cake? He goes a few times up and down and looks defiantly on the cake. But then finally the last picture in that cartoon uh, tells it all. Damn it, says Hagar. And he stuffs the whole cake into his uh, face. Yes, many have set out to practice detachment from unhealthy habits, but in the end they succumbed to these unhealthy habits. What is a practical solution? The body and the mind have an undeniable influence on our psychology. We can't pretend these temptations and attachments are not there. Otherwise, we end up like Hegel. Srila Prabhupada acknowledges that it's difficult to be unaffected by the temporary happiness and distress which pertains to the body and the mind. He says, it is not possible at present to assert that we are unidentified with the body and the mind. Therefore, in our present state of existence, there is no possibility of being indifferent in these matters of material happiness and distress. And then he concedes, thus acquiring transcendental knowledge does not mean that we become indifferent to our present state of affairs, but it means that we should not be overwhelmed by the coming and going of happiness and distress. And he, a little later, he gives a solution. He says, when someone is on a journey back home, uh, he, he will be able to tolerate the um, uh, distresses which are there on the journey because he knows I am heading homeward. One of my friends told me that he had a horse and uh, it was always difficult to uh, motivate the horse to, to gallop uh, um, uh, you know, through the forests and meadows and so on and so forth. But when he turned the horse around and the horse knew we are going back home to our barn, the horse was tolerating everything. He even swam through a river, jumped over fences because he derived great encouragement and great pleasure and strength uh, from um, being on his way home. A devotee in this world can take the same inspiration by knowing that his journey brings him uh, back to uh, Krishna and then it is possible for him to tolerate the unavoidable uh, distresses and also happinesses which are waiting for him on the journey. In this relationship or context, I would like to tell you the story of an extraordinary female devotee called Sri Vara Mukhi. She was a prostitute and had amassed uh, 
a lot of wealth. She owned a beautiful palace-like house and a, a large property. Yes, she was young and she was attached to her wealth. Now one evening, a group of devotees was walking down the street while they were on a um, lecture tour. Because it was getting late, they needed a place to rest. And when they saw the shady courtyard of the prostitute's house, they liked it so much that without an invitation, they just went there and camped under the tree. They took out their deities and placed them nicely um, on something that looked like a table and made their aratiques. The prostitute uh, was seeing all this from one of the windows. Um, and when she saw these swan-like devotees whose hearts were just so simple and pure, she thought, what good fortune has come to me today. So many devotees of the Lord have arrived at my doorstep. It is sure that they don't know my name and my profession. So thinking like this, the prostitute went inside her house and brought out a plate full of gold coins which she placed in front of the devotees and said, kindly take this and offer it to your worshipable lords. As she was speaking, her tears, her eyes filled with tears as, um, because she remembered her unexpected good fortune. When the devotees saw this huge plate of, of filled with gold coins, they wondered, who, who is this person? She's so young and she's so wealthy. And th they asked her, what, uh, who are you and what do you do? Now immediately this prostitute became very bashful and did not dare to tell the truth. But the devotees uh, who saw her anxiety encouraged her and said, speak without hesitation. Um, so the prostitute folded her hands and c confessed, I'm a prostitute. I'm, I'm living, I'm earning all this wealth in sinful way, in sinful ways. And she fell at the feet of the saintly devotees and, and prayed, my house is full of this wealth. Can't you do me a favor and just accept all of it and this way purify my uh, life and profession? I'm feeling without your mercy, I'm as good as dead. You know, she, some, some real transformations went on by being in contact with these saintly devotees. And so the devotees responded, um, we don't really need so much money, but we have an idea. Why don't you prepare an extraordinary uh, precious crown from with your wealth and offer it to Lord Ranganath? Ranganath is a huge deity. Mm -hmm. The prostitutes answer, my dear sir, sir, you may be merciful, but the priests are not. I don't think I will have a chance to offer uh, uh, this crown. However, the devotees encouraged her. She completed this crown, put it on a big plate, dressed herself very nicely, and fearlessly entered the temple of Rod Ranganath. Mm. However, as she was standing in the temple, she felt so embarrassed uh, and thought she was unfit. Mm. The devotees who were there said, why she suddenly was so afraid. 
and she replied, mm, uh, if I tell you uh, the name of my profession, you will shudder. This is wealth which is earned by sinful means. As Lord Ranganath watched all this, he appeared in the mind of one of these priests and said, go and bring that lady here. Let her put her crown on my head with her own hands. So the priests called the prostitute as, and as she tried to put on her crown on Lord Ranganath, the Lord bent his head downward to gracefully accept her offering because of her very good character and because of the blessings of the devotees. Her attachments that would have bound her to repeated births and deaths was transformed. She became detached and attached to Krishna. My dear listeners, this is the safe way of becoming detached, even if you are surrounded in very compromising circumstances. Somehow develop attachment to Krishna by hearing about him from the mouths of those who are attached. I wish you all the best. See how you can apply this in this week and uh, see you very soon in the next Above the Clouds.